So the Les Paul Standard is one of Gibson's most widely circulated USA guitar models, and for good reason. It had a short stint from 1958 to 1960, but saw a resurgence from 1976 on. So you'll find Gibson Les Paul Standards as early as the late 50s. What makes these guitars super unique is the collection of tone woods that make a Les Paul a Les Paul. For those of you who don't know what the Les Paul tone woods are, they are simply a mahogany back and side set neck, either rosewood or ebony fingerboard with a maple cap on top. And those tone woods are essentially what makes the Les Paul, the Les Paul. Les Paul is widely used for blues, for rock, for jazz, for all kinds of styles of music. And you can honestly find a Les Paul to suit any genre-like occasion you could possibly imagine. But the Les Paul is really cool for some other things as well. Now, originally, Les Pauls did not start with a sunburst and a humbucking finish or pickup system. The original Les Pauls were actually gold tops with P90s in them. Humbuckers didn't get placed until 1958 or so. But for most people, when they think of the Les Paul, they think of this kind of guitar. You see the quilting of the maple on top of the mahogany body. You can see where the maple is in this binding here, and the rest of it is solid mahogany. You've got a traditional stop tail bridge with the saddles. What also I find fascinating and enjoyable about these guitars is that unlike the Fender models, we actually have different inlays. We have keystone inlays on this particular Les Paul. There are block inlays, parallelogram inlays, and some Les Pauls do have the dots, but in my opinion, if you're gonna buy a Les Paul, it's gotta have these keystone inlays. Now, as far as headstocks are concerned, Les Pauls have been known for their break angles. For those of you who may be aware of Les Pauls tuning stability issues, you'll find that many Les Pauls have a lot of string binding along the G-string here, okay? And that's because the Les Paul style design caused break angles to happen that weren't exactly physically optimized for the guitar's tuning. But if you find a nice Les Paul, tuning shouldn't be an issue for you. The Gibson tuners are usually Gibson Deluxe or modern Gibsons also use Cluson tuners. And then of course you have the gorgeous Gibson logo and the Les Paul inscription on the headstock. Now as far as buying a Les Paul, okay, that can be a little bit tricky for some of us here. I recommend anyone trying to buy a Les Paul standard to go out and try the guitar for yourself. There are a couple things you need to keep in mind regarding Les Paul builds. One, not every decade is gonna be consistent with each other. I find that the early 2000s Les Pauls are some of the best, 2001 to 2007, okay? But that's from personal preference. There are gonna be other decades as well. 1990 was also a great decade for Les Paul standards. But as far as what you're getting at in the guitar itself, Couple things to keep in mind. One, guitar humbuckers are going to change throughout the decades. Some of them were like vintage PAF style pickups. Some of them were Gibson burst bucker pickups as an example. So it's up to you to decide what kind of humbuckers you want on the guitar. The other thing is going to be neck shape. People swear up and down by the neck shape. As you can see, this neck shape is very slim. This is a 60s slim taper neck, okay? Now for other guitars, they may enjoy a 50s traditional neck. It's a lot more beefier, a lot more chunkier and does feel definitely different. So if you don't know what kind of neck you like on which Les Paul or another, decide because that's a huge crucial factor in buying your Les Paul standard. So as far as Gibson Les Paul colorways and sunbursts, they are also going to differ. Now be aware if you do buy a Les Paul with a traditional sunburst or this maple quilting, it is gonna cost more money overall and it will retain more value overall. But traditionally, Les Paul standards have a sunburst, cherry, honey burst, icy like this one. You can see how the coloration of the guitar becomes more solid near the edges and kind of bursts toward the sides here. That's the idea of the sunburst, okay? Now, 
As far as the back is concerned, they're pretty much going to be standard across the board. Typically darker mahogany for some of the darker guitars, but it just depends on personal preference, okay? But if you get a solid colored front of a Les Paul, there are many. There's black Les Pauls, there are um, green Les Pauls, there are all kinds of colors underneath the rainbow. They are going to find that they're going to be less in value unless you're able to find more of the custom shop world of guitars. Now one common thing people have an issue with, this is just a tips and trick for you, is that these pots tend to fly off. Now there are a couple ways of getting around that. Sometimes you can just take a pair of screwdrivers and just pry one of the metal prongs to allow your pot to stick. The other way of course, I found this as well is people just take a little paper towel or a rag and just cover the top of the pickup and then slide the pot cover back onto it. Those things help to keep the pot from slipping when you're playing and it's a tip and trick for many Les Paul users to get the most out of their instrument. Now one thing to note when buying Les Paul standards is of course there are many different types of Les Paul in the world. You have to be aware of the models for that decade, for that year, and be able to choose properly. There are Les Paul standards, but also Les Paul Fadeds, Les Paul Classics, Les Paul Studios, and many others. Although, if you're gonna buy a Les Paul, you're very, very safe buying the Les Paul standard. Some of the cheaper models are going to offer you a little bit more flexibility. As an example, the Les Paul Studio is a great Les Paul without all of the quilting, without all of the fancy work done on the front and all of that cosmetic brilliance you see with traditional Les Pauls. That being said, I think there's nothing quite like a Les Paul standard. It's kind of like a coming of age for many guitarists to finally achieve their Les Paul standard. This is actually going to be my first Les Paul standard. I got this in a trade for a Eric Johnson Thinline Stratocaster. This guitar is a 2005 Ice T Les Paul standard. While we plug it in and get to see some of these tones, you saw the beginning part of this video, but I want to play some more just so you all can get an idea of what this guitar really sounds like. All right, the first pickup selection is gonna be these two middle ones. Pretty classic combination, neck and bridge. Let's see how it sounds under heavy distortion. That sustain. Now if I'm feeling real feisty, want to get real grungy, I slip over to the neck position. Position number one, it'll be this pickup. <laughs> Love those fuzzy tones. Next and finally, we have our bridge position pickup. I love this sound. You could probably tell why it's my favorite. <laughs>
guys, the Les Paul Standard is an incredible guitar. Anyone who has not gotten one yet should totally consider finding one that works for them. Guys, if you like this video, please consider subscribing. I make videos all the time. This guitar is one of my favorites. I can't get enough of it, and I'm going to play it for a very, very long time. If you guys have a Les Paul Standard decade in mind you think is better than the others, let me know down in the comments below. Help some future Les Paul players out by telling them which ones to buy and which ones to stay away from. Have a good day, guys, and we'll see you next time on iGuitar.